Welcome to the Tone Jerks Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Goward. With me today is Kyle McIntyre. And we have uh, live in-studio guests in the house. We have the Montel Jordans. Would you like to introduce yourself, fellas? Yeah, we're the Montel Jordans. <laughs> okay, individually by your names. <laughs> this we is have? Tim, uh, the singer and rhythm guitarist for the Montel Jordans. And the talent, the heartthrob. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go again. The looks, no. the brains. <laughs> yeah. the, the, whole, the dick, the whole operation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, this is Ryan, lead guitar, and uh, I don't know, that's about it. I don't well, he, yeah, do there it. you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, Tim covers all of it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, so before we get into it with you guys, I'll uh, do a quick uh, what's new. Kyle, what's new in your world? What's shaking? Uh, well, we uh, demoed the Thalium 81 from Fat Foot FatFootFX. Yes, we were sent that pedal from yeah, uh, that was Digger, awesome. so we yeah. were uh, stoked on that one. It's a cool uh, distortion overdrive pedal. So we'll uh, have that out soon. Yeah, hopefully uh, maybe in the next week or so. So yeah. keep an eye out on the YouTubes and Instagram for that one. Yeah, we did that with uh, RJ yes, from, from Teletox. Yes, so we're pretty stoked on that one. I think it's coming out pretty good. He's pretty stoked on it. So uh, what else? We went We went to a gear swap. Yes, locally, down at, uh, San Diego gear, gear swap. Brick by brick. That was really cool. Picked up some new stuff. I got a GE7, which is a uh, boss pedal. It's just a EQ. Yeah. And I'm going to mod that. Got it for a smoke deal. Yeah, I got it for like 40 bucks. Yeah. So Cool. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. And then we met uh, Fire Hose Straps. So we met uh, Rob from there. Yeah. So. Basically just grabs fire hoses from all over California. <laughs> he makes it a strap. Yeah. No, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Like, like upcycled like fire hoses. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Our buddy Johnny Ray told us about the show. And so we were able to go and support like local, you know, like a local music thing. So it's actually pretty cool. Hopefully uh, they do more of those. Yeah, those so we'll keep those. keep an eye out for that. Uh, well, uh, Tim, what's new in your world? Well, I feel like the attention spans. We should we should mention our show coming yeah. up this month. Are you first and foremost, are, yeah, they've already lost. Oh their yeah, attention. Yeah, I'm, I'm, two minutes in. The more I talk, the more people are going <laughs> to yeah. be clicking off of this thing. Yeah, so. Get the information out now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll plug it again. Um, yeah, we are actually playing that show with you guys. Yeah, so it's gonna be cool. It's a charity show for. Feeding San Diego. I'm taking your, your spot. No, hit it, dude. Yeah, you can do better than that. show. It's a punk rock goes 80s night. We're doing it at 710 Beach Club, Montel Jordans, Chasing Claymores, mm-hmm. uh, Ready, Set, Survive, and Infinite Signal. And then uh, Playing Fat Pilot, we're rounding up that bill. That is May 27th. It's a Sunday, but Memorial it's- Memorial Day weekend? Yeah, so everyone's off Monday. Get ready to party. It's uh, Kyle's it's birthday. It's my birthday. Oh, shit. Ooh, dirty damn. 30. So you guys got to cruise out. We're going to- Flirty 30. It's, yeah. It's going to be filthy 30. <laughs> <laughs> Squirty 30. <laughs> so you guys are practicing, getting ready for that, getting your 80s. 80s on. Not as much as it should be, but no, yeah, we're, we're, we're yeah, going to yeah, start. We're trying yeah. to. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, you know, we're in the same co- boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got a couple that we definitely need to practice. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. God, it's tough to practice these days. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one just because, uh, you know, it's it's cover driven. So it's um, obviously, you know, we mm-hmm. all, all the bands choose covers from the 80s uh, to do that night. So it'll be fun to hear the renditions and hear songs that you know if you're not already familiar with the band. So uh, it's a good one to, to make it out to. Yeah, it's a cool one. So if you, yeah, like you said, if you don't know all the bands, you'll probably know some some of the songs and easy yeah. to get into a band. If you know a song, you can humble along. Are you guys releasing what covers you're playing yet? No. So we're okay. gonna keep that under wraps. Okay. Did anyone did anyone release their covers? I don't think so. I think it's only so. in between the bands we all know who's uh, okay. what, who's covering what. So I don't think we know what you guys are covering though. No. Good. Because we haven't actually answered any of these. I emails. hope we <laughs> I hope we choose the exact same covers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just not playing as well. A dual cover yeah. dual. <laughs> Learning the shit for a month. Yeah. <laughs> Who did it best? <laughs> Who done did it? <laughs> All right, Ryan. Uh, what's what, what do I do? What's new in your world? Uh, nothing really. Went to the dentist. <laughs> oh, yeah, fun. It was yeah. fun stuff. With a pain in the mouth, huh? Uh-huh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> got finger banged in the mouth for about an hour and a half. <laughs> but you're... Charged me three hundred dollars for it. Um, there you go. <laughs> on the way here, Ryan's like, dude, like. I my mouth talk. is numb. I can't yeah. talk. I'm like, perfect day to do it right before a podcast. Yeah, yeah no, I was like completely numb until like right before I got. <laughs> You're like, like perfect. Luckily, yeah, I'm fine now. But right. How before long I did got that last? It's like three hours. Oh man, it was terrible. <laughs> so You're it actually yeah, great, so food, great spirit. Annoy, it, super annoying. Biting your tongue, biting concerned. your mouth. No, bite your cheeks I did. at all. I, I bought, I bit my lip a little bit on it. Yeah. Why is there so much blood? All right. You know, you were talking about the the guitar straps, and I 
um, the guy, that's a really super cool idea with the, the mm -hmm. hoses. But I feel like Ryan works leather. I don't know if you know this. He's a craftsman. No, oh, cool. And he, you've been trying to, I've been trying to get him to do a, a, a little side business making like guitar straps. Well, I make my own straps. So all the straps yeah. I use, I make. Oh, cool. But they're all, they just take a while, dude. <laughs> and it's like, what, you know, what's someone going to pay for a guitar strap? I'm like, shit. I'm Ain't no one got time for that. Fucking working like eight hours cutting leather by hand. And you should shit see these things. He's got like. Stuff. Buckles and yeah. I mean, buckets. if you have any pictures of it, oh, let um, me know. I don't know if I have any pictures. We could put it on Brian. Instagram Brian likes whatever. anime and rhinestones. I'm sure you, you can go. find <laughs> something. <laughs> we can make one special. Oh, there you go, a special custom one. Well, I don't want to throw that out there because I don't want. I don't want to make guitar shots. <laughs> yeah, everyone's hitting you up. <laughs> it's the worst idea I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, if you hit me up, I'm just gonna go straight to trash with like, that. <laughs> yeah, I have a hard enough time making my own shit. So yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to do it. Nah, I, th I thought I could throw in some gear there. That's all. Yeah, that's what I. Kind of gear. Yeah. yeah. Brian, what's new with you? Uh, I recently was on the Flip and Flippers podcast, so they've already like uh, been on ours, so I you know, had to go crash their podcast. So that will actually be... Have... You didn't get the invite? Yeah. You go literally literally just go yeah. Crash yeah. <laughs> I go to Co's house. I'm like, let me in! Let me in! And <laughs> so that one will have already aired by the airing of this one. So go check out Flip and Flippers if you um, haven't already. So same podcast you're listening to this on. Check them out. Uh, I just made sure, like, to get my quota of mentioning the Evertune and anime. Paul was like, "Yeah, five minutes in, you already make sure to get those fucking plugs in." <laughs> Dude, can, you can't bend with an Evertune, right? You can. You can. You can. Oh, yeah. it They're doesn't pretty... just like compensate. for it, it does. It can compensate for it, but it can also not. You have to adjust out of that range, basically, yeah. with it's, the tuner. Oh, oh. Freaking awesome! Yeah, I don't know. That, that don't confuses me. Yeah, it. It's once you use it, it's like it. You can totally understand what it is. Yeah, it's like, but it's hard to like just if you don't put it in somebody's hands. I think that's yeah. The our thing. Like, our old bass player uh, Adam, he sent me like the most boring instructional video on how that shit worked. It was informative. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it's weird. So it's like everything's kind of like its own. Yeah, Floyd Rose basically. Kinda, it's like their spring tension is what yeah. it does. And Didn't send get... you the Bill Nye version of yeah. that, no, yeah. no. dude. It was like I couldn't even get through the video. It was so dry and boring. It was awful. <laughs> what yeah. we have here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and then I also got in a delivery just the other day. I got in from Aeros Effects. I got in. I ordered their Saiyan Drive, which is their Dragon Ball Z special version of the Brutal Drive. <laughs> it's fucking so sick. I got it just for the graphic because it's Goku Super Saiyan doing a Kamehameha. And it was and even like, the knobs have like... Yeah. And it's like the brightest LED in the fucking world. And I was like, oh man, this pedal is actually really cool because it's like totally... They're a metal company. They're really... They're, it's their main deal. It's like you put that in front of like an amp and you can make it sound like a 5150, 6505. It's like totally like Ola England, like, like whatever you... I'm like, oh, let me put it in front of like, you know an AC30 and like it sounds like jar, 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 jar. I'm like oh I put it in my rocker room I'm like dude it's like this is a pretty cool fucking pedal so yeah. it was unique and it was a good purchase so do you want me to paint that for you? no <laughs> okay you know speaking of anime that's what my friends when I was like super young we would have like the parents rent those yeah, yeah. because they'd always have anime they'd always have hentai in them yeah because they'd always put in like sex scenes you're like and this is what we know it's a cartoon was, you're like but 10 mom, years old it's a cartoon yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, with that and the Miku, I'm, I'm working on an all. I'm inspired now to an all anime board, so I'm gonna make it a call out to any you pedal just want builders. An all garbage board. Yeah. That's what you want. <laughs> any pedal builders that will do custom well, graphics, hit me up. Well, I was gonna say, can you just kind of print kind of graphics for your pedals you already have? That's like what I'm thinking. Yeah, but I'm like, I think there's some like like my pedals. They do one uh, lamp electric. There, I already talked to them about doing a custom engraved ones because they do them now. And I was thinking like. I think, like, I wonder if, like, lollygagger effects. This guy does, like, these, like, really good, like, you know what, like... It's a wooden box, basically. It's a wooden enclosure. So, and he, like, either burns on his graphics or something. Yeah, he does, like, something. a laser a laser mm -hmm. etch on it. Yeah, so it's a call out to Sean. If he'll do me an anime pedal, I'll buy a Canalia. <laughs> <laughs> if he still listens to our podcast. Yeah, that's, but, some, that's some fucking next level dad shit right yeah. there. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's my next thing here, is, like, uh, anime board. But that's uh, pretty much me done with the, uh, what's new... You want to jump into the interview? You guys ready? I'm going to sure, be grilled. Sure. Ask yeah, shit. Yeah, okay. we are an open book. Okay, man. Mm -hmm. cool. So <laughs> I want to take it all the way back uh, to the beginning. What got you into music? When did the bug bite you, so to speak? Um, for me, it was being at house parties. Yeah. When I was like 13. Well, no, no, no. Okay, 14 and up. And up. So you I weren't didn't... getting any attention from the ladies, you thought? Absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> not at all. And... 
there was a few friends there that could play the guitar, and I always thought it was like so cool. They'd be sitting there playing oh, guitar. Man, they're playing Wonderwall, getting yeah, yeah, all the exactly. ladies. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's actually there's actually a couple shredder dudes too who are like doing a bunch of sweeps and shit at like 15, 16. This one's called Crash and, by Ed yeah. Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I always just thought it was so sweet, and I loved. I always just love you know rock and roll. Yeah, the idea of like okay, like these people are playing guitar. I want yeah, to Yeah, I always just thought it'd be. I was like, dude. Being able to like solo would be so cool. And then I got super into 80s, you know, hair metal stuff, classic rock and yeah. high school. And then I just wanted to be able to play like Slash. I was a huge Guns N' Roses fan in high school and all that. Um, and then started doing some like metal, hardcore metal core shit yeah, when yeah. I was like 18. A lot of just like the the breakdown and the, the yeah. weird <laughs> dissonant sounding riffs. Um, and I think we played three shows total and that was it. And then I moved down to San Diego and I, that, that was all it was. And then where were you living before? I, oh, I was up in Northern California. Okay. okay. I was born and raised in Santa Rosa. All right. Um, so we played in a band called City Heat. There you go. And oh. we did one EP. So I did a <laughs> janky recording process and they always are. Yeah. yeah <laughs> my bass player and step. No step brother who was the bass player in his grandma's house. <laughs> we she produced it. She actually uh, yeah, was the brain was behind the operation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah, we played three shows, and um, I don't like. I played pretty shitty for most of them, so mm-hmm. I wasn't super excited about it. And then moved down here, didn't play the guitar for like four or five years. Oh dang! And then so I was basically I was just done. I was like done with guitars. Was guitar then, your first instrument? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then what uh, other instrument do you play, right? Um, skin flute, rusty trombone, <laughs> um, <laughs> jugs. Oh, I play jugs. those. <laughs> Bang on those oh, jugs. I play the shit out of the jugs. <laughs> Just bat them around, you know, <laughs> like a banshee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then this dude right here moved down from Connecticut and was, was playing music back there and was just like, dude, I'm trying to get something going. You play guitar. And I'm like, dude, I don't play guitar. I used to play guitar. Like, I <laughs> That's don't the play only guitar man. anymore. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's like all this dramatic. I'm like, pulling this, you out of retirement. <laughs> <a> different life. <laughs> all right, well, Tim, uh, what about you? What got you into music? Um, <clears throat> I always loved music as a young age. And, and I mm-hmm. would say that my, like, you know, growing up, you just listen to your parents' music and, yeah. and what have you. But, uh, just the start of it was like, you know, Motown and, and but then, you know, also like Aerosmith and, you know, just, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Can we delete this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cut that out. Yeah, it's deleted. Keep going. Yeah. Um, for pop, pop. No, actually, I could say that the first album I ever bought was a tape cassette and it was uh, Dookie's. Nice. Um, uh, Green Day's Dookie. And I played that thing out. And I think that was my first like epiphany of like i love punk rock i love yeah. fast music like this is what i love and then i got older and i went to uh when i was in high school like a, f- a couple of my friends played guitar and i was the same as ryan just like, i always thought it was so cool and like they would play like bush's machine head and i'd be like dude just keep doing that that's so <laughs> rad yeah um and so then i finally like you know my brother started playing drums with uh with his friends um and they were learning their instruments too. They were just starting yeah. out. And so it was like an opportunity to me hang out with like older kids and whatever. And so like I would go and I just, uh, I got a guitar for Christmas and I just learned how to play chords. Yeah. You like, went, went straight to like. like and then it, didn't learn anything else. I, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. <laughs> that's all you could do. All I need to do is just yeah. learn some power chords. My friend was like, I've never seen anyone learn how to play like the guitar faster than you. But I just totally just plat. Once I learned chords, I just plateaued. I just like, I, I can play things that I want to play and that's it. Yeah. Once you get enough to learn how to play songs, then yeah. you're like, well, I'm playing songs. I'm, yeah. like, I'm playing riffs. It's weird though. Like I do lead stuff. So I'm so bad at playing chords. I'm so like unrhythmic with it. And Tim's like, dude, just play this, this, the, the rhythm on that. And I'm like, keep weird. up, dude. That's a weird <laughs> strumming pattern. <laughs> Which is the exact opposite. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know a scale. I don't know anything there is. To Which know. I think is beneficial. Yeah. You guys are perfect but, for each no, other. But yeah. think about it though, because then you write completely off melody and yeah. you're not writing off like the box that you're supposed to stay yeah, into. I think and, that's like, the laws of scales. Really, and shit. really a good point actually. You know? So um, I, he, yeah, that's what I told him. I was like, never learn a scale. <laughs> yeah. Well, like uh, Kyle and I have learned in such a different way. He's definitely just a natural musician, and I had to like really, really study at it for a long time. So like, I knew, a, I know a little bit more music theory of like, okay, here's your natural or like you know whatever. Here's your first and he, my scale degrees. Or, you know, you generally want to end on a fifth or le- yeah. play these notes as to whatever. 
and the you know play these notes for scale and these chords yada yada whereas like when kyle will write something he will just write something that sounds good to him mm-hmm. But he doesn't know to him. No yeah. one else. Yeah. Sounds no, good no, to you know, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Like he'll bring it to me. It's like, oh, this sounds cool. And I'm like, I would have never fucking done that. Right. Yeah. I would have sure. just because in my, I'm in my own head of like, I would have never fucking went to these chords. I'm like, it sounds fucking cool. It's yeah. interesting. And so we uh, like write songs together like that. And to me, I think that's really cool. It's that you have a dynamic of Thanks, your band. Brian. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're here. <laughs> I, think, I think that's what Eddie Van Halen did too. Yeah. He was just I like, a lot of people... scales, just do what sounds good. Yeah. Don't worry about scales. That's what, I mean. And he's no. got some weird shit. I, I get too, compared you know? to Eddie Van Halen a lot. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Edmund Von Hohenheim, <laughs> EVH. <laughs> All right. So you kind of went to your early influences was like, okay, you were like more, you know, Tim, you were more pop punk and kind of stuff like that. And then you were, Ryan, you were more like 80s rock. And, uh, yeah, you 80s hear rock. Those... Then I did the, got into the, the hardcore stuff yeah. for a few years and then reverted back. You guys still like, it's, I mean, you know, not to like, pigeonhole but it seems like that's kind of your band um yeah. you hear a lot of the pop hooks the the strong a lot of the heavy riffs and i feel like that's like you guys are really bringing your influences to it uh have you guys like really uh i'm sure everybody's branching out but any notable notable influences besides those like maybe um, more rock and pop other things I don't yeah know, man. i would say that especially um so that's exa- you pretty much nailed it like so i have kind of like a punk pop pop punk background and so i would write these songs and then when i take them to ryan um what he put over it just would completely transform the song and make it something completely different and um when we were writing our first album we were like brand new band we we kind of we didn't even play really shows until we we released our first album yeah that's good so it was kind of just like finding our sound and it came naturally where i would just kind of you know write this like structure of you know poppy kind of you know punk and then by the time ryan was done with it it just was a completely different song so those were by far our strongest influences i think are the rock 80s metal meets pop punk yeah that's really cool that's what came out naturally because we tried to do something else when we first started we tried to be like an indie yeah indie cool band yeah yeah. you know and then just like like, barefoot on like a square peg in a round hole he's like this (laughs) isn't fucking working it felt felt forced yeah 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 Yeah. Birkenstocks whatever exactly yeah yeah. (laughs) and we tried like we we wrote we wrote a few songs, like probably an EP's worth, and then we were kind of both just like, because because yeah. yeah. what happened was when we started playing music together, um, we we didn't think like we're like, well, Ryan's like, well, I don't like pop punk, and I was like, well, I don't do metal, so we didn't think that we could, could like be compatible. Yeah. Like, well, what music do we like together? Okay, we kind of yeah, like yeah. indie music. Let's <laughs> let's do that. So we wrote these indie songs, and then after we were, we got like you know four done, we're like. I gotta rock, man. This you're, is not you're like, us. You're like, you're like, like, I don't hey, like this. I, yeah, this is weird. This is not me. I'm, I'm not my own skin. And yeah. then Tim wrote "Oh Boy." I think that was the one. That was the yeah. first like song of our current style. Yeah, that yeah. He wrote, and then I put my shit over it, and I was like, "Oh, that was way more fun to do yeah. than the other stuff." And it was way more effortless. Like it was yeah. like we didn't have to think about. It. We didn't have to try. It was just like, here you go. Yeah. So I, I'm. And then our next album, I'm excited to say, like, I think it's more, it touches more on, um, I think the first album was more pop punk with, like, sprinkles of hair yeah. metal. And I think this next album is going to be more of a over the hump of more 80s hair metal with the sprinkles. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like, you kind of keep the hooks of pop punk in there. Yeah. Metal, yeah. I mean, so maybe I steamrolled over it, but uh, before the Montel Jordans, like, Tim, were you in other bands or was this like, your first, like... Yeah, so when I was in high school, I started uh, playing in a band called Three Lane Change. Yeah. Um, and it was a complete pop punk band. That's dangerous, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds... Well, that, that, that would be no reckless. other band than a pop punk band, that well, name. what's funny is in Connecticut, our highways were only three lanes. Mm-hmm. And so that was like the drastic change was three lanes. Three but then lanes. you come out to like Sa- San Diego, it's like Dude, seven 20 lanes. lanes. Yeah, <laughs> 20 lane change. <laughs> um. Right. But uh, yeah, then I moved to, to California and kind of like Ryan, I, I didn't play music for, for a while, like okay. five years. I'd oh, say to pick up my guitar. Oh, um, Jesus. And then finally got the itch again. And, well, that's cool. Yeah. And you kind of like around the same time meeting each other, almost yeah. like a same story of like, okay, we used to do this and, you know, maybe I like wrote it off for a little while, but you, you know, you guys met and you're like, oh. Yeah. I think once you get a taste, you'll never actually fully ever let it go. You yeah. Know? You might take breaks, but yeah. it's always in there, you know? <laughs> I have those friends who are like, Oh yeah, I haven't played. I don't play in bands anymore. I can't really, you know. Uh, okay. okay, do you want a, uh, one of these other we... lights here? Yeah, fuck it. Tim open. can drink the warm yeah. beer. Okay, <laughs> I'll drink the warm yeah. one. You okay. get the warm one. Okay. okay. Sorry okay. for the the clanky janky. Yeah, the that's all right. <laughs> this is the, we're doing a live here. Yeah. We're doing a live. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
yeah so you uh i have friends who are like they kind of sorry lost my train of thought so i have friends who like they get out of playing in bands and then they all still have that itch still it's like oh, i wouldn't yeah. want to just play a show yeah like, i have some like friends who like came out to see us we played till two there was you know we played at like midnight and there was like you know maybe like a handful of people still out there's still a good amount of people there and stuff like that but he's like man i want to do this yeah. i want to be at a bar till like closing playing music <laughs> yeah. he's like and like oh, most people man. are like dude i don't want to fucking do that dude, it's, like, it's, it's like, a just, dirty restroom yeah it's like i just want to do that <laughs> and i'm like so i'm like it's still fun it's fucking fun oh, there's it's, good ups there's downs it's a good time for so. sure the best it's the worst yeah <laughs> like it's it's really is both for me at least it's yeah. the greatest thing ever and then it's so fucking terrible at the, same like the most uncomfortable comfortable yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly it's like a it's an unconditional love but i remember like um walking we played our first show and we couldn't when we we started as a band none of us are from san diego so like we couldn't get a gig anywhere like, oh, sure. we were like calling up every bar venue and just no one cared because it's obviously a you know, saturated market but we finally got a gig at the ken club for our first show okay. and i remember like loading in early just walking in the back and you get that just like pre-open musty smell of the bar and i'm just like i'm home like this is where i need to be i'm back (laughs) yeah i've never been here but i'm back (laughs) exactly (laughs) okay so like uh when did uh the montel jordans become a thing like how did you guys actually meet and like say we're starting a band we uh we met through um mutual a mutual friend of mine yeah um and so we were actually friends for those years where that we weren't neither of us were playing guitar Mm -hmm. so we were friends probably like Three or four years. Yeah, we're just crushing beers. For yeah, like just crushing beers. Just crushing beers. Just crush it. Like a crushing. lot, like a lot of drinking. Yeah, <laughs> like a lot of drinking. Tim would pass Let's not out. kid ourselves. <laughs> yeah, kitchen floor, bathroom floor, yeah, like any matter. floor, he was passed out. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. The lowest surface I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then so I, I kind of got the itch first, and I, and I, I nagged Ryan for for a long time. Where the finally he was just like, all right, fine, dude, like. Fine, we'll just jam, and then <laughs> yeah. the rest of history. Nice, and then you're like, okay, I'll, I'll, we'll round up a rhythm section and kind of get that squared away, and you guys, yeah, that's yeah. how Montel Jordans was born. Yeah. Spent a long time looking for a drummer. They're, oh, yeah. they're, they're always yeah. the hardest ones. Tell know. us about it. Yeah. Well, then we found Matt, and then for some reason we just had... It's just clicked. Bass, our bass players. Yeah. <laughs> We've been through like... Oh, they're the worst. five of them or something. <laughs> it just, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. We cannot hold a bass player down. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I think it's like... I've always heard bass players were really tough. And for us, it's like, oh, like, luckily, I have Kyle. We're both like, <laughs> okay, the two of us, we just always look for drummers. And yeah. so far, we've been pretty good and pretty lucky with who we've been playing with recently. Yeah. So don't so jinx it. Keep, keep <laughs> our fingers crossed Jesus. here. Is it because everyone wants to be a fucking front man? Everybody. Is that why you can't get a rhythm section? Yeah. yeah. No the drummer to wants to back. be up front. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I starts drums and go, oh, I want to be all the way up the front yeah. of the stage. <laughs> no. I will say, though, um, we, we've gone through bassists, but we've always ended like super cordially we're super good friends with all of the bassists that have ever played with us yeah, it just yeah. kind of life happens and and people just go different directions so we just kind of said just more bad luck than them not working out but yeah. Uh, yeah i think that's recently been our thing it's like usually it ends pretty well but when yeah. we were younger it was always like we like would the end of the super world fucking heated meltdowns and, yeah, yeah. Like, you're the worst person <laughs> Dude, ever you I can't shit. i can't contain my emotions get the fuck out of my sight <laughs> we- we saw the best melt. We saw a band break up when we played this show um, up in Northern California in Walnut Creek on a tour we did. Yeah, our, um, our party party monster. Yeah, party yeah. Tour yeah. Watched a band guys. break up in the back of a venue, and like they were just the guy. This dude was losing his shit. They break up. The guy runs against the wall, starts pounding his fists against the wall, and just screaming fuck at the top of his lungs, <laughs> oh, like God. super, just so fucking dramatic. And we're all just standing there watching him. And then his bass player was like, fuck you, dude, and walks off with it. It was funny because he had just had like a little bass in a gig bag and like a tiny little bass. Man. <laughs> a little so it looked like a little toy. And he just like walks off all You're mad. You're supposed to keep those t- feelings <laughs> inside. Yeah. Well, you know? What's so funny about it is like the meltdown was as if they were like ACDC, like career yeah. ending. It's like, dude, you opened up and there was probably like 10 to 15 people there not to even see you in the crowd. Like, yeah. like it's okay. It was a small You could have been something. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it was insane. Like, it's not the what we were, it's what we could have been. Yeah. yeah. I think he like, I think he got kicked out because he flipped the table inside. I don't remember what happened. What? <laughs> what? what? It just ended with him, yeah, it's punching like, the wall. Yeah. yeah. That's like all a I concrete so wall yeah. or something. Yeah, it was like shit. a stucco wall. <laughs> oh, just God. banging his fists on it, yelling, fuck. Like and there's yeah. like 20 people outside just staring. It's gonna at be him. okay, dog. <laughs> yeah, you're good. <laughs> okay, so like 
Uh, so we're in the Montel Jordans now. So like, would you guys want to describe kind of the sound of your band? I mean, like what I said before, it's like I get like a lot of the heavy riff guitars, rock and roll, 80s guitars yeah. with like the pop punk melodies, like something like catchy choruses. That's kind of what I get out of your band. Like what's a... That's, well, yeah. We were given a bad review in the reader. The reader. <laughs> and the guy said we're a an amalgamation of pop punk sheen and heavy metal guitar riffs. Like, we went, okay, go on. That's actually like, kind of true. I'm like, why? <laughs> How is that bad? That was, yeah. a, that was a good description. So, he did not like our album at all. So it, was, it was hilarious. Um, Matt like sent him one of our demos yeah. just like to listen. We, we, didn't, we didn't even know he did it. And so the opening line of the uh, article was that. And we're like, oh, sweet. The rest of it just trashed on us. But I was like, we're stealing that. So now like, and, like when we made a press kit and everything, we're like, recently described with the San Diego Reader magazine. Yeah. And then the rest of the album, just, the article just trashed yeah, on us. We've but we'll stole it. True statement. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've got reference the article. Like, yeah. Not like, they weren't bad reviews. It's like, I think it was like from the Reader or City Beat, we got one for like our, our EP or like something that we sent him. He's like, this sounds really like produced. It sounds really like they spent a lot of money and time on this. And like almost like a backhanded thing. I'm like, yeah. I recorded that in my bedroom, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody else who's paying thousands of dollars, I recorded that with my dog yeah. in my bed. Uh, and dude, it's, funny, <laughs> it's funny you it say that. We, um, it was like one of our first out of town shows. We played uh, Las Vegas at a, uh, was it Double Down? Double Down. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, and Double before. Before we played, um, there was a podcast, and yes. so we, yeah, we yeah, went yeah. on. Yeah. We've, we've been on that one <laughs> yeah. before. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun, yeah. It was cool. <laughs> for, so you he, guys, for you guys. You guys are just like a straight kind of punk, <laughs> pop punk band, you know? Or yeah. I might have described you wrong. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. So that's it. Yeah. Sorry if you, you know, if you have a whole other description that I didn't. That I didn't get. Was but. it some like fat guy doing the podcast? Uh, Probably. There's a lot of them I know, but I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't think I'm pretty sure so. he was overweight. Yeah. Okay. I don't. He wasn't like a big dude, but I think but, he had longer hair and like a goatee. But so he didn't know who we were, and, and we were out of town. I think he, he was like before we started the podcast. He's like, you know, I'm gonna go really hard on you guys. Hope you don't mind. I'm gonna like no, know, like beat 30 you up. seconds before we went on like yeah on air because it's like on a, ra- a local radio station. Yeah. Right? So like, all right, man, do what you got to do. Um, but his whole thing, to your point, his whole thing was, "Oh, you're so produced. You, you're like this touring band. Like, I back in my day, we recorded on like tape, and we're, we're like, like, first off, we're, like, we're not a touring band, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I appreciate you thinking we are. We're Second, we're miles away from home, bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could go back home to my bed if I wanted. To. <laughs> but it was the same thing at the time. Adam was in the band. We're like, dude, we recorded this ourselves. You know, like we used to do the four track recordings too. I mean, like, but the fact that he was kind of backhanding yeah, compliments yeah. with." Um, it was overproduced, and we're like, we didn't even have a producer. We produced it ourselves. Yeah, and we yeah. recorded ourselves. So thank you. Like, we'll take it. Yeah, I think it's like nowadays. It's like people don't understand. It's like if you take some fucking time and a little bit of effort, and you give a shit, you can have yeah. good fucking recordings. People yeah. are, I always think I'm like, it's like like it is back in the '80s or '90s. Like you have to throw thousands of dollars and like to be or like have backing or stuff like that. I'm like, no, you can still do it no. if you yeah. give a shit about your band and right. songs. You don't mind and stuff like taking that. the yeah. time to do it. I think, yeah. and like we're all working bands here. We're trying to get shit done that sounds good. <laughs> it's right. like, yo, it's like you can sound good, or you can like some bands purposely sound like garbage because they're like, this sound, this sounds rough. I'm like, yeah, but dude, I ain't, I'm gonna skip that yeah, next right, time. Right. I'm not yeah. gonna well, listen to this again. <laughs> isn't it like you know, like when uh, I feel like when I'm back in high school and a band you get into before they're big, and like you're like so stoked on them and then they come out with that next album that's like super produced and you're like man it's not like their old shit dude yeah. it's not the same <laughs> but like now when I go back and listen to those bands I can't listen to the early stuff basically yeah. based on the production value I'm like I'm going to the later albums that have that better sound yeah you know? when it when it sounds like garbage you're like Ugh. some of my favorite bands I feel like that too I'm like I don't like the way it sounds yeah. back in the you know late 90s or whatever right I'm like yeah. it's all about whatever you know when they finally found what they were looking for you know yeah mm-hmm. for sure Okay, so you guys are kind of like, um, it's like a collaborative effort writing these songs, right? So you guys like, what's your like songwriting process? Are you coming up with songs together, you guys? Or you have like the meat and potato, like the structure, the yeah, bones of it, and you guys are Tim adding it? Generally, writes a song uh-huh. and then brings like, hey, I wrote something new. Because he's the chords man. He's the chords guy. The chords guy. Right. I'm, the, I'm the sex appeal. He's the, yeah, I'm the foundation. guy, yep. yeah. Uh, the big swinging dick in the band. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Big swinging here. <laughs> well, our definition of big is a little smaller than most. But, you know. <laughs> um, Collectively, as a band, we have an average. So. Status quo. <laughs> we're packing we're some hugely heat. Hugely for... average. Yep. Collectively. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, now, yeah, he he basically writes a song and then brings it over, and it's like, what do you guys think? And it's 
usually a little on the pop punk side of stuff, a little poppy, and then I'll put my leads over it, and it you know gives a little more rock and roll metally hair metally stuff going on. Usually adding um, like riffs and like yeah, stuff so, like that to it, or is it yeah? So usually things? I come up with like the structures gotcha. and the melodies, um, and then I'll take it to Ryan. We'll sit down together and kind of he'll he'll just um, put the leads and maybe some like you know open chords. Yeah, and Tim basically just plays the chords, and then I just try to come up with shit over you it. do just, this okay yeah. <laughs> like you're, you're figuring out like Son okay what bitch what scale are you in so i can solo over this <laughs> yeah exactly yeah basically he's like what key are you in i'm like i don't no idea i have no idea what, what key i'm in i don't know q fuck it i don't and then, know and then two and a half hours the later is. once we figured out the key yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> we start. nice yeah because i'm always like fascinated how bands like write i'm like some people just write in a studio or like in their rehearsal space or like some yeah. people like yeah you know, write only in the studio. So it's I, like, I, I usually, uh, I know, and it, that always intrigues me too, because um, you know, some bands start with lyrics first, and they put the melodies to it, or they yeah. make it based around that. Um, I usually do like the melody and the chords at the same time. Gotcha. Yeah. It's kind of just like, and I come up with just uh, like dummy words, and I just kind of like free flow on like words that just come to the top of my head mm-hmm. while I'm writing the melody in the songs. Um, is it a flow of consciousness? I think they call it. Yeah, but it's kind of weird. We usually end up keeping the majority of it. Yeah, which is weird about it. Like I don't kind of. Like, I've works. only done that once, and I yeah. really turned out killer. I love it. Yeah. Song. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's kind of like how all of our songs were, especially on the first that's album. Cool. I just kind of like write made up words, and then I I have uh, lines in it that I'm like I really like, and then I then I understand the lines that yeah don't work. It's like and your I, first instinct was the best one. Yeah, and then, and then I I form the rest of the words that I write to those lines that I really like. But it, it is weird how that shit works. Mm-hmm. It's just like we'll be sitting there like okay, I want to write something like this over it, write whatever. We're two two and a half hours, and nothing's come from it. And it's like all right, fuck it, just play whatever feels right. Yeah, and then yeah. <laughs> like, we just did that like a couple months ago, and then like legit the first thing that I started playing I was like oh shit that works yeah <laughs> that works like when I wasn't trying to do it it's like what first thing that comes to mind even him when I when I give him when I show him the songs for the first time usually like the first thing you play yeah is what we usually like base yeah I think that just on. happened with the solo with the new song we're working on too it was just like the first thing that came out and then I was like oh I don't know I was just jamming over it Tim's like dude you listen to the recording it sounds good it works like perfect yeah Oh fuck! Okay, sure. You, do, you don't want to overthink things sometimes. Yeah. You yeah. know, keep it simple. Do less, yeah. man. Like yeah. who knew? Less, yeah. right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so your your guys' uh, latest release was the single uh, "Bust to Nuts." So yeah. what is the? How was the recording process for for you guys? Was it different using during that song, or was it like? Yeah, we are you, used. Are you guys like comfortable guy. in the studio? What's your guys' like? I'm take? very uncomfortable in the studio. Really. Just like I, I feel the pressure on me, and I'm. I guess where'd you guys record it? Relax. Actually, do you guys do it yourselves <clears throat> in your house or? No, no. Um, so our first album we did with Adam Cisco, who yeah. was our bassist. Studio Fifty Two. It's a shout out, dog. Um, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he actually introduced us to uh, this guy Nick, who did like an internship with um, Feldman, who just did the whatever. I can't remember his name. Feldman. Corey. Corey yeah, Feldman. Yeah. <laughs> He's, He's got a Blink album. I love <laughs> Corey Feldman. Yeah. Oh, shit. yeah, the Goldfinger guy. Yeah, yeah. the Goldfinger guy. Um, so he has a studio up in L.A. called Causality. You got it right. I got it right. Causality Studio. <laughs> um, and he was awesome to work with. Um, yeah. But, well, both guys were, but but working with Nick um, was a really good good process. He's, you know, super positive, supportive, you know. Yeah. Mellow as shit. Mellow as so hell. So mellow. I actually felt comfortable recording for once. Usually, I'm yeah, just hate it. Your nerves, yeah, usually, yeah. Way too much pressure on me, and I just fucking crumble. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't did, do it. Was, it. Yeah, it was just so easy with him. And then I did a few takes. I'm like, I don't think I really like, you know, I don't know if that was a take. All right, we'll just you know do one more, and that should be good. He's like, honestly, it sounded good to me, man. Like, well, nice. And then yeah, you get the recording, and it's like, oh shit, that sounded fucking great. Yeah, so he did was, a really good job with it. That was a really it. good process. So we're, uh, I, we actually just uh, hit him up this week because we have um, another full-length album that's pretty much done. Okay, the cool. The skeleton of it. So um, we just worked it out. So we, I think we're going to work with him on the next full-length as well. Nice. Oh, yeah. dang. Yeah. Nice. And he works quick. He knows what he's doing. So you guys like trying to just like uh, bang it out when you're in the studio? Are you guys like taking chances with tones or sounds? Or like, okay, we want to try and do add keys to this or like background vocals that we don't uh, have a chance not- to? Or, really at all. Yeah. I feel like we get in there and it's like, 
What's this is what I play live, and they're like, just not, just "Is that what you're doing?" Well, I'm like, to, "I got three knobs on my amp, so <laughs> fuck it, that's what we're doing." <laughs> to an extent, um, I think you know we definitely spend the time to find the tone we want before we start even recording. So yeah. like, that's a whole like yeah. process. Yeah, kind of knocked that out before we when we went to him, we uh, we had the song pre proed already, so we kind of already recorded it and kind of added the stuff we were going to add to it. But I feel like always when you're in the studio, there's always things that end up coming out naturally that you mm. didn't expect to be on it originally you know like whether it's this certain harmony or you change something up there something always changes and you add to things but for the most part we when we go into the studio we have the songs done yeah i get a, i get go. a very live vibe from it that's like okay yeah. this kind of translates very well to what your live tones are and stuff like mm -hmm. that yeah and tim does most of the pre-proing too so it's kind of like the song's already structured already pre-pro when you go in there it's not like you know, yeah, I mean, being that, here for yeah. a long time, working the whole thing out with the producer, you helps know, like and all that. I streamline the whole process. Where yeah, you're so <laughs> like, goes, okay, we're just gonna knock yeah, this out. Ends up going pretty quick. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna segue crappily into what are your <laughs> what are your live rigs? What is it, what what are you playing live? Uh, who are you wearing, basically? Who so, am I wearing? How about um, um, maybe Tim? Do you want to go first? Because you, you're Ryan, pretty streamlined. Do, Ryan, right? what do I play? <laughs> what, what's your, what's your, your plays is a this is, this 2002 <laughs> Gibson SG Special. That's correct. There you go. Through a shitty, what? cheap live wire cable. I <laughs> know oh, you got wireless now. <laughs> Through a mediocre wireless system. Well, I, I replaced <laughs> I replaced my bridge pickup, Ryan. What did I put in? What did I install? Uh, I think you did a 498T. <laughs> That's correct. I believe. Those are like the hot ceramic ones, right? Yeah, it's like Gibson, kind of like a standard Gibson pickup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I like the thing is a little better. Well, than I mean, the you standard. replace it, but it was your other. It was the same <laughs> so pickup. Fun. Your pickup just shit out. So. <laughs> Yeah, but was it, yeah. and I play. So that wasn't I, like a tonal move. <laughs> it wasn't like just oh, replaced. Yeah. It was, broken, it was yeah. like, dude, I think my pick. He was playing on his neck pickup for like a fucking year. <laughs> like, dude, get it fixed. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the truth. Nobody statement. loves their neck pickup. No, nobody <laughs> loves it. Unless you're doing those hot licks and yeah. smooth, <laughs> those smooth, tasty tunes. BB King. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> um, but I have a super son a Fender Supersonic 22 um, yeah. amp that I. Ran, so I, I went, uh, I wanted to up upgrade uh, my amp and I went to some, uh, you know, music stores and this one was used uh, at a consignment almost mm -hmm. yeah. store and I, and I tried everything in the, in the store and nothing really blew me away and I plugged into this thing and I was like, instantly, that's the amp. Yeah, I've heard both those, of us those are like, those, that's your fucking I've sound. heard those are like, you wouldn't expect like fenders to have like a great gain channel. Yeah. But, like that one has great gain. And, it does, like, it has a, has a second cleans. gain, yep. And so uh, I didn't even know anything about the amp other than I liked it. And then I bought it and I got home and I was like, I might as well research this thing. And then, yeah, I found the same thing. I had got great reviews. Everyone was raving about it. Yeah. Um, they and knocked I it out it. of the park with that one. Yeah, they did. Dude, yeah. That thing sounds really good. Like nothing, no pedal that you've used or any of that shit has made it better than just your straight amp. To yeah. That thing. Yeah. Are you doing a lot of channel switching or are you just keeping straight that drive channel? Pretty much. I, I go to a, a clean a few times, but uh, for yeah, the most normally. part, I just... <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, what's your wireless? Do you have a pedal set up or? So you got the the Line Six G thirty. What's it called? Or G thirty, G seventy, or whatever. It's a thirty. G thirty. Yeah, it's the okay. lower model because yeah. I was uh, <laughs> <laughs> way down there. Yeah. We, we were actually uh, on 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 tour and. Uh, I had no money. I was between jobs, and yeah. so uh, one of our friends worked at Guitar Center, so I got his uh, hook up. But I'm like, let's be real. Give me the base model. Yeah. I'm like, I don't play huge stages. I I can you yeah. know work with this. But yeah, not having cables couldn't really free you up. You know, tripping over huge. Shit. It's yeah. a it's a whole new world, man. It's Aladdin. It's fucking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can never go back. You know. Yeah, I I loved using wireless when I had it, and then when I went to using a pedal board, I was like, fuck, I can't do this. I can't run cable. Like, and then. I recently like I've seen all these companies come out with like pedal board wireless things. I'm like, oh shit, I might want to get back to that. Dude, yeah. My my wireless, I have the sure. Yeah. Actually I fucking forget what it is. The GLX or whatever. Something the hell like it was. that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It was a, it was expensive. It was like four hundred dollars, so I yeah. assumed it was a nice one. Like this better be um, fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that one on the footprint thing, you can put that on your pedal board, yeah. it's got a tuner built in. So you get to yeah. get rid of a pedal, which is nice. Yeah, that's cool. And it's all metal. Yeah, it's good. So you can stomp on that well, motherfucker. That, yeah, his is sweet too because I have to change my batteries out for every show, and he's got these rechargeable batteries. Lithium oh, ion. Oh, there dog. you go. And uh, <laughs> last show yeah. we played, we, we played uh, the House of Blues. I think it actually was that the we opened up for Steel Panther. Yeah, nice. And um, 
I did a, I jumped up on my amp and I jumped off the amp and then I landed and it just cut out completely. Oh. And I was like, fuck, because <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't know what happened. I don't know why it cut out. And then like, just by a miracle, it just ended up coming back on. Yeah. Oh, thank but God. Uh, after that, I'm like, okay, I'm going to invest in like, I think it was the wireless rig. I was like, I'm going to yeah, invest yeah. in something nice. Dude, honestly, that sure one is worth it just because of the being able to charge it. Yeah. I leave it on my strap. Just plug it in. It's some it's some shit like you charge it for fifteen minutes and it'll give you like an hour and a half worth of battery life. Yeah. Oh shit. That's so cool. if you if it's dead, like you know, when you're setting up, you can yeah, just plug charge it, it enough to play the gig, you know, which is nice. And nice. you get like fifteen hours on a full charge or some shit like wow. that. Um Are you running any pedals, Tim? Or is it just you're like you said you use drive pedals before, or do you guys do anything to like kind of like Goose the front end. Yeah, I run or... a uh, I run a tuner pedal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best <laughs> tones. The yeah. best tones out of that one. It's a boss. Um, <laughs> yeah, TU two or yeah. your T three. What are you what are you working on? He's rocking the two. I'm working the All two. Right. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Keeping it. You've had that. Th- Actually, I like the two oh, better than your one too. I actually like the two better. Too. I got the three just mm-hmm. because I bought it new and they were past the two at that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yours is actually easier. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's it is too many lights going on. I three. will say I stole one of Ryan's pedals and it's, uh, a, it's move, a good pedal but it's a good move no i we didn't steal it. i let him use it because i got it and i was like it doesn't really work with my sound yeah but this will work great with your amp okay let me rephrase <laughs> i didn't pay for it and i haven't given it back <laughs> well yeah you you've <laughs> never <laughs> used your own overdrive pedal yeah. you used my rat for a while until oh, that dang. shit out and then i gave you the ocd that's the pedal so he's using the, the full tone or whatever the yeah. ocd yeah um, it's sweet yeah i recommend it to everyone uh-huh. listening <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm like in the process of selling mine. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like it's a, a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it, it's, it's, it's a cool pedal. No, I actually, like, I love that pedal. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Ryan, do you want to buy his? And I'll just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so Ryan, what what's what about your rig? What's uh, um, you, you're a Gibson guy too. What's yeah. what are you rocking? Explorer. So my main nice. one is a 1990. Oh dang, Explorer. Um, pretty much stock as far as I can tell. I think it is. Um. And like, no mods or anything. And then, um, yeah, that goes into my Sure Wireless that we just talked about. And then I'm pretty fucking simple. I have a the Voodoo Lab power pedal power two yeah, or yeah, whatever. Definitely, yeah. Um, I have a Soul Food the Electro Harmonics pedal. Yeah, that I are... don't use any. All I use that for is a clean boost. Yeah, that's a good. It's... That's like the uh, Klon clone of their whole thing. Some, yeah, it's it's more of like a vintagey tone mm-hmm. to it that doesn't really work for me that well. Oh, so really? Okay. I got it because there's a shit ton of boost to it. Yeah, okay. A bunch of DBs hit. Yeah. yeah. So I just use that as a clean boost, and then that goes into a uh, Electro Harmonics fucking whatever the, re- the reverb pedal oh, is. yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget they, what it's called. Uh... I don't know. It's got that like flurb setting yeah, or some flurb. shit. Oh my God, why is it? Why is it? Is it the? I don't know. I never the thing. I never the use effects. it though. It's on the board. Actually, I took it off the board and I put a Phase ninety in there that I also never use. What? That's a great pedal. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just I don't. I never know where to put it in. And then that goes. Uh, That's what she said to my. <laughs> <laughs> I never to know a, where to put a, it. <laughs> a Boss DD seven delay that I use. Yeah. Okay. Those very are, those are, rarely in our those are set. Cool. So I'm. Yeah. I don't have a lot of pedals. Yeah. I barely use them. I. It's hard what? enough for me to do the stuff with the the hands i'm like i don't need to be concerned with my feet too yeah, so you're pretty much like even though you got the pedals you're kind of you just run them the whole time right what's your Most rig time? brian what's it looking like my rig mm-hmm. what do you mean let's see let's your see. amps oh 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 are we done i, th- I didn't know we were done with with their pedals all that Wait, oh uh, are you pedals? done with pedals well, no yeah, well, right. no i am done with pedals. okay i thought so yeah <laughs> i'm trying i want to not have pedals i honestly just want nothing i want to go straight but, into okay. a fucking amp. all right then what's your amp then you got um i use a <laughs> well, he's like tim's trying anyway. to drive it yeah, yeah i'm driving the show amps. dogs I see i get bored he talks gear all the time and i just dude no one this is the place to do it this is the place to do it no one this is because this is what always happens anyone in my in my life i swear to god that i try to talk gear to I get 30 seconds in and they're tuned out. <laughs> Ryan will be like talking about his tone at practice and I'll just be like, oh yeah, okay. One, two, yeah. they just count in mid-sentence. And I'm mid-sentence. not even that big of a gear guy. Like yeah, I got a guitar, basic. there's a cable and then it runs here and then that's it. <laughs> oh, cool. Can we play now? Yeah. I'm like, oh, on this guitar, I, I wired in some uh, fucking coil split switches. I thought it was pretty cool. Like, yeah, yeah, fuck off, fuck off. Yeah. Let's look at it. I have this uh, resistor yet? bleed that <laughs> cost my... Uh, <laughs> I got these orange what? drop capacitors. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's uh, what about what's the amp? Uh, I use rocking? an orange dark terror. Orange guy, I like it. Yeah, 
Nice. That was just like the first tube head that I bought. Mm-hmm. And because I was looking at the tiny terras and I was like, oh, the dark terra is an extra preamp tube. So you get more games. The like, only okay, bigger cool. orange guy than Ryan is Trump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just came up with that. I'll be here all night. Boom, cha. Oh, boom. boom. <laughs> 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 um, let's see. Then that go, And then I have a, I want to say it's like late 90s. Uh, Marshall, uh, 1960 B cab. Yeah, that I go into with vintage thirties. Yeah, the straight one. Is it the che- checkered one, right? Yeah, I I have that. I put like the vintage grill cloth shit on. Oh, okay, so it, so it is V thirties in there, not the greenbacks. It's not the greenbacks. Okay, it's cool. the vintage thirties. Nice, but that one actually sounds pretty good. I got it for like fucking two hundred bucks from some dude. Nice, nice, yeah. And That's it awesome. beat it. What'd you do? Yeah, <laughs> beat the shit no <laughs> give me the guy the guy man. was just super cool he played in some like Must like high mexican hardcore <laughs> yeah. band and he wasn't playing music anymore and he's like oh, i love this he's like i've been touring with this cab for <laughs> this like 10 years mexican- <laughs> it was I, they sang in spanish and it was like he showed me the shit and it was <laughs> yeah that's it and, a- and uh dang it was fucking 200 bucks the dude almost forgot to get the money from me <laughs> like we're just talking music and we're like loading it into my car and he's like all right cool dude and i'm like Hey man, here's your. Money. He's like, oh shit, I forgot to get the money. <laughs> so yes, I'm, he was high. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm helping you steal this. Yeah, phone. I know. <laughs> but no, it sounds good. And, and nice, yeah. Oh, and, do you ever find like uh, the 15 watts? You know, sometimes not enough. Yeah, oh definitely. I've been looking into it. I was, I was just looking at. I think 30 watts would be good for like, me. Like yeah, because you were saying you want to go straight into an amp. Maybe sell some pedals and get a. Yeah, Any I was. Amps I kind of want to get. I don't know if I want to get like a Rocker Thirty, yeah, or those are like a, a TH Thirty or something like that. Rocker I've been, Thirty. I don't know. I've wanted the Friedman Pink Taco. Yeah, for a long time, but it's like fifteen hundred bucks for a twenty watt amp head. Yeah, <laughs> super expensive. All hand wired shit. It's a little more on like the Marshall end of how it yeah. sounds. And yeah, I'm surprised I'm you're like, not like a Marshall guy. That's more. But I it's don't just know. Like orange like, works I am. For you. I, I think the Marshall Stop tone is awesome. judging people, Brian. But right. <laughs> I think, I don't know if it would work for me. I think it's like, because it's a little on the treblier end. Yeah. Marshalls not... are. I don't know. I feel like the kind of darker sound would just work better. Maybe I'm wrong. One, but... two, th- oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so used to cutting into a song. <laughs> Fuck off, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I always like the idea of like the, you know, 15 watt orange, like lunchbox heads. But I always yeah. thought I'm like, Oh man, is that gonna be en- loud enough? It's like it is. It is. <laughs> but for you, most have four, shit. you have you have a four by twelve, so I guess yeah. you're pushing more air. So it's fine generally. Yeah. But sometimes it's like you kind of got to. You're not. Re- it. You're not really trying to get a clean tone, anyways. So it's no, like I don't clean. Like, it's one not, channel. Yeah. I never. If I need to clean up, I just roll off on the volume. Yeah. Nice. Same is thing. It, I don't. I don't need a foot switch. I don't need more shit to do with my feet. Yeah. Isn't there an eighty one forty at uh, Moe's? You pick up for yeah. There's a like a 140 <laughs> watt orange that they oh, have shit. at uh, locally at Mo's Guitars. I'm like, ooh, that's... oh, out in uh, La Mesa, right? Yeah, yeah. Mo's. I'm like 140 watts. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Dude, they do orange does a fucking TH 200. Yeah, they used to do <laughs> that's those. Insane. I, well, yeah, I guess I don't do it anymore. But fucking 200. Yeah, watt you still find them because like people are selling them. I think you can get them like a Craigslist for you know. Twelve hundred bucks, something like that. Yeah, they're like cheap because no one wants. Because if people realize, I'm like, ooh, I don't need two hundred yeah. watts. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, any anywhere you play is gonna be mic'd, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. If anything, the lower wattage has worked nice for you because you can kind of crank it, get those tubes warmed. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah and I still mean, yeah. be mic'd up. Um, extra volume, you're fine. I will yeah, say, so I, I saw. I just want to talk about you. I just saw. Congratulations on the uh, the CD release. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you. I saw you this weekend. You guys played. You killed it. It was awesome. Thank you. And I was looking at your pedal board, my <laughs> man, and that thing is a monster. But dude, the way you have to like, you have like Fred Flintstone toes, where you're just like See, in between uh, things, just I'm like not coordinated <laughs> enough for that. Pushing shit. buttons. I, I've, I've got <laughs> yeah. it down to uh, yeah. I have I have a fractal. And I have it down to where I'm like doing like scene changes so I can go from like, okay, my clean tone is like volume at 35% and with spring reverb and a slap delay. And then I can go to my dry tone, which is my main tone, which is just straight into the amp. And then I can go into like my bigger tone, which is like tube screamer in front and then like two dB in the back end pushing the, uh, you know, power amp through the effects loop. And I and then I can go to my solo channel, and so I have all these things set up. So I'm like, I, I'm switching so many effects on at a time by just pushing a button. Yeah, yeah. And people yeah. are like, wow, you really have that dialed uh-huh. in. I'm like, <laughs> some friends have like 
I saw you when you first had this thing. It's like you were really figuring it out. You're like, fuck, 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 fuck yeah, <laughs> on stage. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, it actually you dialed it in. It took a long. I mean, yeah, it's taken me like a year to really dial it in. Sometimes like it's taken practices and shows to figure out what doesn't work or what like if, like I've built in noise gates and stuff like that. But the pedal board is pretty extensive. It's yeah. big. It's well, a PT3. So it's like pretty fucking massive. And it's like lots of pedals on, going on there and everything is like pretty, you know, has a purpose, except for like the Miku is fucking worthless. I have a clock uh. on there <laughs> just so I know when our set time is, and I have like oh that's nice. I have like oh, a actually USB needed. charging <laughs> if I ever needed to charge my phone. Damn. And so it's like, and then I have like picks and stuff like that. So people phone charge is serious, man. <laughs> if I need to charge, it's got yeah. two ports it's like, on yeah. it. So it's the fucking I'm not going to complain about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 and it's it's <laughs> it's really like there's a lot of contingency built into the pedal board too like i have my like direct out in case my my whole pedal rig went out i can go straight plugging into that Jesus. bypassing it to go straight to the amp it's, it's like got a flat s- screen on there yeah no, it, it's, 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 keep it's, up with my stories he's watching gilmore girls <laughs> yeah. All yeah. Yeah. it's it's really like a big deal and people are like oh man what are these things for i'm like well i need to be able to switch yeah. if i had to like because a show is going to go on and people don't give a fuck if yeah. your stuff's going down so that's why like the pedal board's like really a big deal and i want to get all these big sounds and from being a band with like a guitarist, like I'm the guitarist, like I don't have anybody else. Yeah. I need to, I want to cover big sounds and big yeah. changes. Like I'm like to make, okay, I want effects. Yeah, I want, a- you know, cutting out. And I'm like, I want like, you know, draw back. I want dynamic of the band and like a lot yeah, of it. I think you're just like being it. your own guitar tech. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me too. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, but it's like a total different world. Like you guys are more plug and play. Let's mm-hmm. get to fucking rocking, and we want to get to the songs. And we want to get to the titties after the yeah. show. Yeah. Let's just <laughs> do what we got to do uh-huh. to yeah. get through it to get to where we want to be. Yeah. And sometimes they're mine. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, like we have our own, so we, we're we're totally <laughs> we don't. <laughs> yeah. So we're. Uh... <laughs> it's a good joke. I'm gonna keep that one in. Um, yeah. So we. I. I don't know. It's like there's different people, and it's like we're all like kind of doing the same thing. We're writing songs. We're all caring about like our own craft, and like there's different ways to be that's what's cool about having you guys on the show it's like okay you might not be into like pedals and shit like that as much as like i am but it's like you guys are creating a great product that you guys like are passionate about and that's yep. your album that's your band that's your live performance i'm like everybody has there's not more ways to you know to like skin a cat and it's like you yeah. guys are getting your show done like kind of like meat and potatoes i want my guitar maybe like a drive pedal and i really kind of just want to go straight to an amp like you're saying yeah. like i want to get a bigger amp and just kind of go straight into that thing because mm-hmm. guess what all you really need to do is just be in tune and yeah. you're good to go and, and like same thing with you it's like i have my amp that sounds great i don't really don't need a drive pedal right i just want to sing my songs and get my band playing shows that's kind of it and i'm like that's yeah well you know if if you do it right it's i don't think you're gonna find a better sound than just a guitar straight into the amp yeah if you have the right combination of that yeah and every time i get a pedal to put in front of it or some other shit it never works and like it always just sounds off to me or sounds yeah. weird and then i just go back to my regular amp I'm like Dude, that what, why am i fucking around with this shit like just yeah. leave it because <laughs> in your head you got that thing of oh i'm gonna get the perfect sound that isn't really attainable because yeah. it never translates from from how you think it's going to be to how it actually ends <laughs> yeah. up sounding. So you're just that exactly chase for the tone. And then you don't be that guy that like buys something and it's like, dude, it's so sick. But really everyone knows it doesn't sound great. Yeah, he, but he just bought it. So he's like, <laughs> got to like, you're trying to sell everyone, sell else everyone else on, else on and how good it sounds. Yeah. Or whatever. I like for me, I'm that way in the studio. I use just guitar straight into an amp. And yeah. we use that sound a lot. But the thing is, I use like six different guitars and six different amplifiers. Dude, you are a tone jerk, yeah, man. But, you are. <laughs> but when I'm live, oh. I'm like, dude, I have... <laughs> you guys need like a sound effect to play whenever <laughs> someone mentions <laughs> tone jerk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's my thing is like when I'm in the studio, it's like I want guitar straight into an amp, but I'm using different amps. I'm using a Fender yeah. Twin. I'm using an AC30. I'm using a 50, 5150. I'm using like dual rectifiers I'm like, or JC 900. It's like all going. I, to I will say things. though, like, it, do, 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 do. from the yeah. sound of it and from, you know, here, you know what you're doing at least like, you know why you're making these changes and why you're going through the mm. other amps versus me. I'm just like, eh. and to me, it, it's a fun thing to do. And I really do enjoy it, but it's like, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. No, but because people it, could listen to your album and be like, if the songs aren't good, 
then nobody's going to want to listen to your fucking album. Well, it only matters to the gear people. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Oh, so. the tone's sick. And everyone else is like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. I'm listening to the melodies here. I'm not listening to the guitar tone. Yeah, you can fucking play a Line 6 Spider. Nobody's going to go. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Know, <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't play that amp. But... You shouldn't. But yeah. No, I just uh, <laughs> burn that. Yeah. yeah. So I should cancel my eBay. Yeah. Right now. Is that what you're saying? Oh, fuck. shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of a wall of Line 6 Spiders behind us in the next show. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, we are the band that, like, always has, even though we have no gear we always have technical difficulties oh, like always really well we don't really yeah we don't have our shit together when we were on a tech, when we were on tour on, side. uh with the live and well um matt the lead singer of live and well would just be like standing by the stage he every time we go angel. on he was an he was a tour angel because like uh, something would always kick out or something where he'd just yeah, be he on it and it. fix it like that nice. dude on the tennis court when you watch like yeah major, the, yeah, yeah. Like runs yeah, across yeah, yeah. Yeah. Runs back, yeah. just t2 in it over to the stage <laughs> dude he was like so on top of it like he was getting paid to do it yeah like it was crazy well, I mean, you're helping like, your homies out that's really yeah. like, a big part of it it's like you know what else are you gonna do just watch him fucking fail but it, we, it has well, been so usually i'm in the back like oh shit <laughs> well, how somebody this should think I don't know out. how to fix that. Someone else should fix that. <laughs> I feel like, and it's so funny. I don't know if it's just like bad luck or the universe, but this uh, this guy I work with actually just joined a band, and it's his first show this week. And I was like, "How'd it go?" And he's like, "Some technical difficulties." Yeah. It's like it's always like in the yeah. be- first few shows that you have are always like the the worst. Yeah. Somebody died. No. No. <laughs> you know well, that, I, that actually I want to bring it to a that topic, but before I get into that, um. Do you guys want to plug, you know, what's new on the horizon for you guys? Maybe we'll uh, play yeah. a song, too. So uh, um, what's coming up for you guys? We're working on another full-length album. All right. So we don't know if we're going to call it Live in the Vita Cheetah and us being <laughs> che- Cheetah Print. Or maybe <laughs> the first album was Sweater Puppies, and maybe the next one is just Cans. Be cans. We, we're thinking of sticking with the titty-themed album names. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sweater Puppies like. and Cans. Possibly speed bags. Maybe all yeah. speed bags. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe speed bags. Let's call it knockers. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the uh, we will feature the single that you're about to hear right now um, called "Butt Snuts" on it. So it'll be one of the tracks. Um, all right. I think you guys will hear that song right about now.
okay, so the topic, uh, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but uh, what about equipment malfunctions on stage? And how did you recover if you did? Well, Let's go into a round table. We just go into our own stories here. So yeah, how you guys yeah. get started? I would say that every chord I play is a malfunction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong Something, with it. Yeah. You Something's, may not know. Yeah, no, the, the equipment's perfect. It's my playing as a, as a constant my malfunction. I think I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. Like, am I fucking up? Dang. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, this. Tim's just fucking... <laughs> yeah. No, do you guys have a story? I don't know. I, don't, I mean, we don't really have that much... Shit. You I, told I haven't me, had that many malfunctions. No, you told me a story oh, of your first oh, oh, band. Oh. The early band. Yeah. The first band I ever played in. Yeah, so we were playing this backyard show. And um, so we were playing in our hardcore band, all that shit. And we wanted to come out to uh, Europe's final countdown. Yeah. We'll make a dramatic <laughs> entrance. We'll play it over the PA. <laughs> and then apparently... Set the scene. Like, what, what's, what's the vibe? Is it it's backyard? Are there, are there backyard. Babes? There's some babes. There's is, there is, is there a pool? Is there a dog? not a pool. There's a dog running around. It was, it was kind of a shitty house in a shitty a neighborhood. Was it BYOB? Um, I think it was a B- it was BYOB because the dude's house was, was a fucking cheap ass and there's no way he would have bought a keg. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. But so, yeah, we're like, oh, let's do that. We had decided before the show that we were all going to play in hot pants, like <laughs> oh. super short, tiny little shorts. So we Go walk on. out yeah. and we hadn't set it up our cables and shit right my cable was I, I go I have my guitar I go to plug in and my cable's like all caught and tangled and all this <laughs> shit so it's just and everyone's there like waiting and there's just people super close to us you know and like just like did, did, five, you, did like, you run in in hot pants five, after the back just, or were you already on stage when that song came up? We came on? in from the garage. We tried to make like an entrance. Everyone's in hot pants. We're and we this, come like, in like thing. thinking we're good, fucking cool. And then, yeah, I'm, I get my guitar and I go to plug in and my cable's like not right, long enough. So you're enough sweating. To yeah, plug it. yeah, and then, so then it turns into me, okay, I'm going to act it out for you. Oh, he's okay. Me just fucking in front of oh, everyone, bent, bent over, over. <laughs> like this, in hot pants, just in hot pants. It's like you can to get your cables. You can probably like, see yeah. like my my ball pubes. Yeah. Pop, like they were super fucking short. Like they were All tiny right. hot pants. You ball pubes prepare? were short. Or the you prepare short? your pubes for this one? <laughs> no, they, the ball pubes were very long. The hot pants were. Short. It's like your beard. It was like your beard yeah. length. Ball they are pubes. the same <laughs> hair, by yeah. the way. If anyone and I'm just bent over trying to fix my cables while everyone's standing there staring at me and final countdowns playing my ass to him and finally I get it together and then played a pretty sloppy show <laughs> so it was worth it it was, it was all, the whole thing was worth it I just that. love yeah. like especially we were talking before when you think you're a bigger band than you are but I love the I, I just think about like the band meeting before that like house party of 15 people I'll be like, <laughs> like dude we're gonna fucking run in from the garage it's gonna be epic final countdown dude, like that yeah. planning you of guys it. Don't, uh, final countdown you yeah. Know that song? yeah this is the whole we, like idea we thought we were sick we thought it'd be oh, super yeah. funny we're gonna be all funny we're i'm like 18 or some yeah. shit. <laughs> and then you just get to instantly just malfunction oh shit fuck yeah the guitars are working oh shit oh uh, dude yeah just threw me <laughs> off yeah. You're like, oh shit i gotta play oh, yeah. yeah then i just played so sloppy yeah you're in your head at that point point. and at that point too we had another guitar player but this is how young we were he was like 16 or 17 and his mom wouldn't let him play the gig because she said the show was in too bad of an area oh okay. because it was kind of like a shitty neighborhood yeah so it was just me too and i'm playing out of like a full stack because I used someone else's four by, I had a four by twelve cab. Used a different four by twelve cab on the other side of the stage because we got to fill out the guitars. Yeah. And then I just played so sloppy and it was just <laughs> fucking shooting at everyone. <laughs> everyone standing on the other side. Of the yeah. <laughs> All right, Tim. You said you don't have any, but you you were saying that you know your your homie, the homie Matt from Alive and Well, was always like on your on your guard on tour for any, sure. Any, anything on tour, maybe mishaps, maybe just like a pedal coming oh, out or dude, what? Uh, like, how'd you recover on stage? So, yeah, every night was, was something was up for well, sure. Well, okay, you have to tune on or something or what? Usually with Tim, you have the most gear malfunctions for some reason. I yeah. don't know why. I don't know. It's just the, the world's against me, dude. So yeah. It's not me. It, Electronics. It's just it ain't me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so, well, name some. What, well, what? I'm trying to think of the Moose Lounge show. <laughs> oh, well, that <laughs> one was bad. That sounds like it was bad already. Dude, where, where, where was that? Oh, God. That was, that was a stir, oh, I believe. Okay. And it was uh, at this, like, Moose Lounge. 
And before we even went on Moose Lodge, Moose Lodge, the Moose Lodge, Moose Lounge. I mean, we kind of try to make it a lounge area. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, a lounge at the lodge, <laughs> Moose yeah. Knuckle. Yeah, go yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we, we got these pictures ahead of time, and the beer was like. 11% beer yeah, it was 10 or, or 11% shit. it was nice. just the, the girl working behind the bar didn't know that she wasn't supposed to be pouring pictures of that yeah, yeah. so she's like what do you want she's like we got this we have I think it was called like um, the lobotomy or some yeah. shit. Like, I got a lobotomy. That sounds like a good beer. We're like, sure, give us a picture. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're trying to get like your most bang for the puck. I'm like, I'm going to yeah. get two pictures of this. Yeah, so was right. that a light beer? Yeah. 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 Dude, it would look like motor oil. It was like it fucking was, just like, black. A 10W40, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, we, so we got fucking hammered. <laughs> hammered. And then the uh, one, I'm not, a, I'm not a gear guy, so help me out. Before the PA system, there's like a preamp, preamp or something, or something? Yeah. like a power amp. Or power amp, yeah. a power amp. It blew out, uh. and luckily someone had one extra, and we, we no, made it work. Unluckily, yeah, unluckily, because that was probably the worst show we've ever played. Oh, for sure. So we got the, everything working, and I think at one point I was uh, I was very very intoxicated, which <laughs> usually is normal for our gigs, but this yeah. was like you know I can't Abnormal, stand yeah. Ab- ab- yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I think at one point I thought I was trying to be cool and like like snake under your legs on the floor like <laughs> yeah. like like he was so he like idea, crawled you know? under my legs or some so, shit. So I'm on my back. Hopefully he's wearing the hot pants still. Yeah. But yeah, go for well, it. That, Pulling yeah, a Marty McFly. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. So he's like he's in a power stance and I'm on my back on the floor like snaking yeah. <laughs> like between his legs. Well, both of us have been cutting out in the show too. Like right. my shit cut out at one point and I'm just like I don't I was forgetting parts of songs like I, I'd just be playing and I'd just yeah, like hammer, yeah, just be always, like, "Well, I think I went to the wrong part there." Just <laughs> find that key, find yeah. that, just hold that, and then yeah. back in. Come yeah. on the one, and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it was like mid under your legs, and it's not going over well. I started doing like uh, like some Jane Fonda like leg yeah. like splits <laughs> behind you. <laughs> like I can't, I, I can't describe what Dude, was happening. And then. The best part of that was that we found out later someone was streaming that live on uh, Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, oh fuck, dude, that yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. So that was probably the probably the worst and most embarrassing malfunction so was just, Jane Fonda's uh, guitar cutting out. Brutal yeah. show as it is, but was that a wireless thing too? You guys were doing wireless. I think that might have been like one of my first. I think you first... just got wireless. I yeah. didn't have wireless at that yeah. point, but. Uh, you know what? The, the, the truth is, you win some, you lose some. You're yeah. not going to beat yourself up over it. We, yeah. <laughs> we had a good time. Yeah. It made a very good story. Guys, it's a good yeah. story, yeah. All right, well. Which actually is funny because that same, by the way, yeah, we went on tour and <laughs> by no means are even chicks remotely into you. But <laughs> No, that one, they never fucking are. No, People they're think not. like, you're going to get laid on tour. I'm like, yeah, not if you're, a DIY band that nobody fucking cares about <laughs> no, right. and you're sleeping but in a band with a bunch of dudes. You only get laid if the people know who you are. Yeah, you know? yeah I'm going to get laid by me right. yeah. in a band while everybody <laughs> else get, hears you me. You get fucked by four dudes, maybe. They <laughs> well, might know who your band well, everyone was. Everyone else feels that rocking going on. <laughs> yeah, well, which is so funny about it because we like played like some pretty cool shows where we felt like rock stars or doing our thing. No remote interest in chicks whatsoever. That show was like the worst show of all time. And the bartender who was serving these were like active show trying to like come in the the van with us afterwards and we're like yeah. she's super sketchy so we're like we're gonna dip but the one show that we played Castro awful girl. embarrassing we had the most opportunity to pick up yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, fuck it That's goes to show time. kids it's not how you play yeah it's about being around horse yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just surround yourself with horse <laughs> and you will clean up one will stink eventually yeah guys. and Brian what about you you All have right. some horror I, I, stories yeah I uh, I got horror stories not who yeah. stories <laughs> how about that um, okay so I've had a couple so I've had one back when I was kind of getting into pedals I was running everything on a like a daisy chain like a, a one spot and Tim I was still like, uses a fucking daisy chain. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, they're usually pretty fucking good. But this one, I was apparently like, and they're known for it. And I didn't ever like. This was before I was like Research looking, yeah, yeah, researching pedals and knowing about pedals and shit like that. I had a EHX like Nano clone, and I had it daisy chained. Apparently, it hates being daisy chained. <laughs> Because it was so do I. Yeah, <laughs> is that like some look sexual? It up. Look it yeah. up. It's probably got to be. It's got to be. And like it, it, wait, so it just didn't come apparent in practice or no, rehearsal no, or never. Anything? But it like it, it'll like fluctuate with power. And it, oh, we are, yeah. you, when you're on the stage and like you know, <clears throat> yeah. it's running through the power amps and stuff like that. It's like it's like sometimes it's like it'll cut out like when the the power you know the bass is going or something like that. It's like mm-hmm. I, I didn't I never knew it never happened on you know in practice. 
went on stage, it, my it just died. And it doesn't have a bypass because it's like a true bypass. It's like once we're done, it's like we're fucking we're not working today. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And we're in the middle of a set. And I was like, fuck, what do we do? So I had to like, you know, I'm pretty good about seeing what I can do to like, you know, I have tried to have a contingency plan. So what everything. you do is you do the uh, Ashley Simpson and you start ho down. Ho dancing. <laughs> yeah. well, and you uh, smash the shit out of your guitar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, because like, yeah. one thing that uh, it's like you guys had mentioned, we can get by with like. Uh, Kyle's a very driving on bass. Like mm-hmm. he can like, you know, get the rhythm down. He locks in with the drummer and they're doing a thing. I'm like, okay, cool. He's doing that. And then I know sometimes Kyle and I can look at each other. We know that something's up. So I'm like, he's going to sing the chorus here and I'm going to, I'm like, look at him. I'm like, I'm like, come point at my guitar. I'm like, this is, and then he's, he's like, okay, he, I'm taking your chorus now. Great. And then I rip that out, run to the amp, straight into the amp. And then I can play the rest of the set. I'm like, fuck my pedal board now. Guess yeah. what? I'm an amp. Like guitar and an amp kind go. of guy. I want to back do that to your all roots, the time, yeah. bro. <laughs> back, to, back to what you gotta need. Gotta get that uh-huh. crate. But you yeah. got laid after that show too, dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone notices that. Everybody's like, oh my yeah, God. you can do that. That's some Stevie Ray Vaughn shit. <laughs> so that was one thing too. I got a couple others. I guess it's like similar. It's like, you guys played Soma here in San Diego. Mm-hmm. You guys have played there. Yeah. Fucking the power is iffy there sometimes. And I was running a... Uh, my f- fractal, my it's pretty new for me, so I'm still like a learning curve with how to use this fractal board and stuff like that. But it ended up being like the power was so crappy at the front end. Okay, so the uh, podcast has had a little uh, technical difficulties, but we're back. <laughs> so I think we're which, on the subject about which is it. perfect timing of talking about <laughs> yeah. malfunctions and the batteries went out. Yeah, the recording. Yeah, the fucking recording <laughs> went out, but. We're back here. So I think what I was talking about was like Soma, the power coming out. And it was it went out with like every time we hit the kick drum, yeah. like my power on the my side of the stage in the front would go out. And so I was like, fuck it. And I was like in the middle of it. And I noticed it was going. I was like, dude, I'm like, am I just like hearing a really heavy gate or something? And then like, <laughs> I, I, and then I was like playing. I was like one song or two songs. By the time I was the second song in, I was like, dude, my pedals are flickering on and off yeah. with the kick. Yeah. I'm like. So it's just going, and everything's loading up. And what like, would cause that? I wonder. I, it was like something faulty because every time the kick would hit with the subs, it would be loose and oh, the, like the vibrations would loosen. Yep, the, the outlet would weird. Like come oh, out. Oh shit! So dude, dude electricity is so fucking. It was weird. fucking garbage. So was, Fuck electricity. <laughs> so I, I, I told the guys we finished the song. I'm like, all right, um, I think we we're still on the song, and it got to the point where it was like. Uh, same thing like kyle he knows when to back me up i'm like okay we're on like the bridge part i'm like it's kind of a bass like riff solo so i'm like i look to him i'm like this is you dog and kyle's like doing i'm waiting kyle popped his shirt off and just fucking soloed hard and he he did it so i had the time because i'm like i knew what i was doing and i go to him i look at him and the drummer's like the drummer's a fucking there was a, some dipshit was playing drums and like kyle's like okay doing I, I look, basically i just think really hard i look into their eyes and say you must lock in with me and then they do it you must lock in with me and so it happened and it was perfect because i was able to basically rip out my pedal board go straight into the amp and i was like okay I'm, I had a one channel kind of like, you know, on the edge of breakup amp and I end up cranking the gain, cranking the, you know, the main uh, drive section of the amp because of a one channel deal. And boom, I played the rest of the set guitar, not even a tuner straight into the amp and it ended up being OK. Yeah, it sounded like, fucking like Angus great. Young, man. Always yeah. <laughs> trying to do that's your 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 bug out bag. That's yeah. your plan yeah. is like amp, guitar, cable, done. That's yeah. it. So that was it. That was my uh that was my you saved it. Cuz yeah. it was but That's the professionalism. And then, you know yeah, what? You Brian, you're welcome. And so yeah. Yeah, the thing is like Kyle's always my anchor. He's my he's my my rock. Dude, you got no. laid that night I think. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking yeah. crushing it. Yeah. Always. What have you ever done for me? Uh fuck up. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. I give you the glory. <laughs> How about that? How about uh have you ever had any uh, malfunctions? No. And I knew that was the fucking answer. <laughs> no, I have not. Kyle's been the rock. Fucking I would probably prepared. shit my pants, but on stage that time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he would shit his pants at so much like, on fuck! stage. <laughs> and it's like, uh, that's why I'm lucky that I'm the one that 
fucks up because like I have a... like a rock. that song was written about you dog yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. I got you, I got like See, I'm it's actually like, excited that he oh, his ears. shit fucks up more because he's he can like listen to multiple things yeah. at the same time while he's doing shit and I can't do that yeah so like when someone goes off I'm like dude no, that's not how we practice it. Yeah. I'm still doing the same shit <laughs> so I did. What the fuck are you doing? I can't, I can't just like I can't. fucking change to your shit what? now because I don't understand music. This isn't whose line is it anyway. I can't go. Yeah. Well, which, is, which is, I was going to mention that, that you guys have that kind of uns- unspoken communication. Yeah, I'm like Wayne guys... Brady up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking <He's>... crushing it. <laughs> um, cause Why we, people love you. We, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> we have the opposite in our band. Like, because people hate you? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kill Whitey every yeah. show. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> it just goes silent. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Ryan, like, so if we, we, we play to a, 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 to a click track when we play live. Yeah. <clears throat> and so like, if, you know, Matt comes off and like, we all realize, okay, we're off the click track now. He went to a wrong part. Let's let's just follow him. Ryan just in his element, just nope. like this is what I play all the time. Yeah. I don't deviate. What the fuck are you guys doing, <laughs> yeah. dude? I'm just fucking robot mode. Yeah. Just like yeah. this is what I know how to do. Because I'm like I don't know what your fucking upbeat and your fucking downbeat is. I'm terrible with timing yeah. in general. Yeah, like it's a miracle that I can get through a fucking set, dude. A white boy not good with yeah. rhythm. Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, yeah. I got the beat. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like you know. Someone else, if, if a drummer fucks up, then... That's on yeah, you. I'm, I'm fucked up. <laughs> he needs to follow me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, I think uh, we'll end it on that one, on that note. But thank you guys for tuning in. We are the Tone Jerks. Uh, we are super stoked to have the Montel Jordans in today. Uh, one more time, why don't you guys uh, plug what you want to plug and show what you got to show. Where can people check you out? What uh, What's new? What's sure. popping with you guys? Show some I, stuff. I want to plug, first and foremost, my butt. And then <laughs> after I, then I, I want to you want to plug stuff. I want to show my testicles to everyone. <laughs> and that's all all right. So log on to the <laughs> yeah. May twenty seventh, seven ten Beach Club eighties goes punk and a bunch of covers. Awesome bands. You guys are playing it. We're playing it. We're super stoked. Hell yeah! Um, <laughs> it's the hype man back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're gonna be releasing hopefully a uh, full length album by the end of the year. And in the meantime, we have a single off it called Butts to Nuts, a music video for it, shot by Mario Rivera, who's in the band Nights Like Thieves. He did an awesome job shooting it and uh, mixing it, so I want to give him a shout out there. Um, and other than that, we are the best band you've ever heard. So <laughs> basically, if you don't dude, like just... us, then you're fucking dumb, dude. <laughs> Hit us up on Snapchat. You can always send titty pics. Titty pics on Snapchat. We're open to that, I guess. Maybe we might be open to that. We're definitely open to that. <laughs> all right, all right. I like what I'm hearing. Here. Uh, Instagram. The Facebook message us, titty pics. Titty Again, pics. same same thing. Yep. Um, Check us out, spank bang. We're all yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to YouTube, the Montel Jordans, Butts to Nuts, uh, or our single called I'm Not Your Father, You Can Call Me Daddy. Uh, we have two music videos for those, and we're on Spotify. And... I'll see you at May 27th. There we go. All right. uh, So before we head out here, I just want to let you guys know about our Patreon. If you guys want to help support the show, you guys can do so by going to patreon.com slash the tone jerks. And for as little as $1 a month, you can help us out. But at $2 a month, you guys uh, can get an extra episode every week. So we have an extra episode uh, for this one. And we have a whole back catalog of all the old shit that we've ever done before. So you guys get extra episodes, all the behind-the-scenes dirty content. And let me tell you, this one is juicy. It's filthy, gonna be, it's dude. It's going to be juicy, filthy juicy, shit, juicy. bro. <laughs> Two bucks? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Two bucks, dude? Not so, bad, dude. Yeah. Not bad deal. <laughs> do it for one month. Let's do it. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't have to say anything, yeah. but I heard it so loud and clear. <laughs> also, I want to say that... Uh, we started this podcast. I started this on an empty fucking stomach. Me too. I think about five or six beers deep right now. I'm feeling deep. That's right. Loosey five goosey. pounds of pizza. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to get into that. I've just been weirded out by my teeth this whole fucking time because I just came from the dentist. So it's I don't still, think I've you been, have I've been teeth, fucking actually. with my teeth. Yeah. This whole time you've been bleeding. Yeah. Dude, just fucking give it a nice gummer, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back You're and going then my back. boy pull them all out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right you'll have to feed like yeah. 20 of them in there <laughs> all right real quick 
<laughs> I'm still on my end point oh, here. Oh, sure. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> dog. So uh, we, we are so happy. Uh, you know, thank you, to Montel Jordans. We uh, loved having you on the show. Thanks for having us. We love playing with you guys. So this having you guys, is fucking it, sweet. It in, was in, awesome our, time. in the in, in the jerk lounge, it's always good <laughs> yeah. to have you guys. So. <laughs> jerk men, <laughs> jerk <laughs> lounge, yeah. jerk central so, station. So uh, Working thank you guys, and, and we will see you next time. We love you all. Bye. Namaste, dudes. <laughs> <laughs>